I'm vegan. I went vegan. I've, I'm a vegan. Now initially I was going to do this video and I was going to start drinking while I was doing the video and, and start sober and work my way to a, a nice, gentle, calm buzz. But then I got home and realized there was a lot of dishes in the sink and a lot of cleaning in the kitchen I needed to do that wasn't done like it was supposed to be done. <clears throat> Ivan. So I decided to uh, start. I thought it would be a super genius and creative and never been done before video that I would make a vegan Thanksgiving to go cooking tutorial suggestions thing. And I thought why not try to be culturally relevant on the internet and make some kind of Thanksgiving themed video. So this is me attempting to do that and relate to you. I'm going to be making falafels and mashed potatoes, some roasted veggies, mm, corn casserole? Probably some kind of bread, cranberries, and spicy mac and cheese. Well, this is not gonna work. So I'll be filming part of the stuff tonight in this setting, and then I'll be filming some more things tomorrow in another setting. Not that you would know, actually you would know because the, the, the environments are gonna be way different. I'll be dressed way different and everything is gonna be way different. So in this scene, we're going to be making a corn casserole and roasted veggies and uh, potatoes. So what you'll need for this particular recipe is First of all, where's the wine? So, you are going to need um, vegan butter. I, you know what, I'm just not even gonna say vegan because I'm gonna assume that all of you know you should buy vegan ingredients and I'll have everything linked down below. Not linked, I'm not gonna link these things, but I'm gonna list them because this is not a sponsored video, so there just need to be links. Butter and cream styled corn, sour cream, almond milk, cornmeal, or cornbread mix. I like it to be a little bit spicy, so I'm gonna add some hatch green chilies that are already chopped because I don't have time for that shit. I already know this isn't gonna work because it's on a spinny chair and the cat keeps spinning it. Spinning it. Don't. Don't. Basically what we're gonna do is mix all of this stuff together so I need a bowl. There's no bowl. Still no bowl. Are you kidding me right now? Oh my gosh. Okay, well this bowl is not clean. First thing we're gonna do is add a whole entire can of cream corn. Then half a cup of cornmeal. Half a cup of butter, which I'm gonna assume is one of these little dudes. You should probably melt the butter, but I'm not going to. Oh no, the cheese! I forgot the cheese. You also need some cheese, which I didn't mention, so hopefully you've watched this part so you know to add cheese. Half a cup of cheddar is equivalent to half of this stick. And like I said, I didn't think any of this through, so I guess. I will just do slices. I should have shredded this. So I would recommend uh, actually shredding the ch cheddar in the bowl because it's probably gonna melt better. Don't just do what I did. I'm all sorts of drunk. And shred it. This is why recipes need to be specific. They just said cheddar cheese. Aren't you glad you have me to make these mistakes for you? You know what I just realized? Ivan doesn't have a mixer, like a beater, a blender, the so I'm gonna have to take the butter back out and melt it. It's fine. I recommend putting it in one of these and just melt it in the microwave. Even though you lose nutrients, it's probably not any in butter anyways. And then eight ounces of sour cream. This says 12. I'm not gonna measure it, so we're just gonna guess. Okay, I'm pretty sure I said you need an almond milk for this, but this isn't don't you don't so now since this isn't part of the normal recipe I'm just going to guess how much to add 10 scoops so this is what we've got yummy so I would just just now you just mix it hey uh hi mom I just realized that Ivan doesn't have like any kind of baking things barely but I found some Pyrex bowls can I put that in the oven? Yeah, this is really hard when you're kind of drunk, you know, and you don't really know what you're doing because the recipe is not that great. Pour it in there. And if you don't have a spoon on hand, use your hand that's on hand. Now we're gonna put this in the oven at 350 for, um, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. That's what the recipe says. It could be wrong because it's not really led me in the right direction thus far. And I keep moving around, but that's just because I can't decide what the heck I'm doing, what's the best way to film this in who, uh, what am I doing? So now that we got the cornbread cooking, we're going to be making some mashed potatoes, and that should be a lot more easier than what I just did because, uh, yeah, it's potatoes. So basically what you just need are potatoes, and you're going to need some butter, sour cream, and this is where the almond milk comes into play. And then you'll probably need some salt and pepper and 
garlic salt? And I guess you could throw in some cheese if you really wanted some cheese, but I mean, I probably won't put some cheese in it, but I might, because I think that block of cheese actually smells really good. I got the shredded stuff one time, and it was just like, Now I've got a pot of water on the uh, top of the oven. That's the stove. Potatoes here and the water's here. Like, fill it up to about that. So then turn it on high, and once that gets your bubbling broil, you can put all your potato slices in the pot. And don't forget to salt your water, because this is the only point in time you can salt your water, or else it's going to be ruined. That might be with pasta, not potatoes, but... I'm going to take these potatoes, which are these, cut them into equal sizes so I can put them in the pot of water, but I'm also going to cut all the rest of my vegetables that I'm going to be roasting, because that makes the most sense. This knife has been known to cut a few fingers off. Literally, our friend Dustin cut his little pinky off with this, so I could die. I'd say that the smaller you cut the potatoes, the faster they cook, but that could be completely wrong. I think it's just that if you don't make them the same size, then they will take a really long time to cook. So the vegetables I'm going to be roasting in the oven is a R A is are they are a zucchini, some Brussels sprouts, and we've got a carrot. I will probably make more of this on the day of Thanksgiving, but right now I am just cooking for one. Actually, I'm cooking for two right now, so I should probably make more of this now than I plan to on Thanksgiving. But I mean, I will be eating this stuff today, and then it'll also be at Thanksgiving. So I'm kind of like cooking for two people in both situations. So I really should just. What you're gonna do is just cut up your zucchini into little slices, cut your carrot into little slices, and then take your Brussels sprouts and cut them in half. It's really simple. Cut off the butt and cut off the head. Pretend like you're those people in the Robin Hood days where you're trying to hang someone and you're the person that pulls the lever so you're like decapitating them and you're killing them. So just pretend like you're that person, a guillotine, and just guillotine the shit out of your vegetables. So hopefully you've got some veggies that look like this. If you don't, you're probably doing it Right. So we're gonna take these little dudes and add them to the pot of boiling water that you can probably hear behind me. Now you should have something that looks like this. We're gonna put olive oil or vegetable oil, but probably olive oil or canola oil or I, what do I have? Some EVOO for all you Rachel Ray fans out there. Then you're gonna put salt, pepper, any kind of seasoning. I would definitely recommend Emerald Seafood Seasoning. It has nothing to do with seafood. It's just something that you put on seafood, but it's really, really best blend of spices I've ever, ever had. And I always use that, but I don't have it today. I have it at my mom's. So maybe just like give them a light, light toss, light rub. You probably put these in a little bowl and then shake it with the olive oil and then put it on the plate. It might be easier, but I didn't do that. So salt, pepper, garlic salt. Yay! The cornbread's still cooking at 350, so I would just put these in at 350 as well. These will probably go for 30 minutes, and what you'll do is do 15 minutes on one side, and then annoyingly have to go and flip them another 15 minutes so they get cooked on both sides. Now I can actually show you guys what's going on. Right now we've got the potatoes there cooking. We've got 15 minutes on the clock. About to go in for the big hoop de hoop Make a big scoopy scoop in the basketball net. And then we've got the cornbread thing going and we've got our vegetables in there. So I don't think that looks good. So now that our potatoes are done, we're going to take them and put them in another bowl because we like to be wasteful. And then you're just gonna take a fork or some kind of blender or mixer, but we don't have any of that stuff. So a fork is fine. Then you're just going to smash everything. Ta-da! Oh, everything is ready. I get it, I get it. Oh my God. This is the part where I'm really not going to be helpful at all, as if this entire video has been helpful. You're just going to kind of test everything. You're going to just put some milk and some butter, salt, pepper. You can put cheese in it if you want, but you're basically just going to keep adding and adding and tasting and tasting until it suits your taste buds. I really like butter, so I'm probably going to add a half a cup of butter. This is a lot of freaking potatoes. But anything I learned from my mom is not to add a lot of milk, because it could go super, super sloppy and slippy and sloopy. Swat, swashy? Swat, like, milky? So just add a little bit of milk and mix it and see what it looks like. Oh, nuts! I just looked at that, the corn casserole and it is not looking very good. All the butter's coming to the top. It's just looking, it's very jiggly. Anyways, back to the potatoes because those are definitely not screwed up. Now you're just gonna add salt, pepper, garlic, salt, any kind of seasoning that you want. Smell good. Mmm. Oh, and some sour cream. Great idea. You're so smart. I mean, it's just slosh. Dump some of it out. Oh no! Okay, 
you know what? So I'm pretty sure that recipe was just shit for the corn casserole. I, I didn't do anything wrong. It's exactly what it said. It's just not cooking. I'm pretty sure it was way too wet. I should have realized. Wow. What? And I should have realized this when I was making it, but alcohol. I think the corn casserole is ruined. So maybe if you make this recipe, don't. And if you do, add a cup of cornmeal. I'm just going to mix some extra in it. Whatever. But I didn't show it because it's just too hard. It's too hard to film and cook. Hannah Hart, I don't know how you do this. It's just... No. Okay, so what I did was I just took uh, the out of the oven. It was just too sloshy and I added half a cup or a cup more of that cornmeal. I just mixed it and now I'm going to put it back in the oven and see what happens because it tastes really good. This is why I'm doing this. It's like my trial run. I'm going to show you guys how not to do Thanksgiving so that you do it right. Life can be really stressful, but it's okay because cats. So here are the vegetables. I don't know if I showed you. Don't add so much olive oil. I just was really excited to be alive and to be baking and it was too much. That little guy just couldn't handle the heat. Literally. These potatoes are so freaking good. I don't know. I'm super pleased with this. Yes. Okay, so this is what we're working with now. It looks good. It looks good, but who knows? To be honest, I can't tell you if I'd recommend this. Fucking eagle double G. Snoop.